This quick hit for chapter four dealing with listening and responding will focus on social decentering and what it means to be an active listener or dealing with active listening. When we talk about social decentering, you're talking about taking into account the thoughts, the views, the attitudes, the experiences of the other person while you're interacting in some sort of listening activity. I want you to think about you asking someone to listen to you or someone asking you to listen to them. Too often we get into this situation where people say, well, if it was me, I would do this. Or if I were in your situation, I would do this. That's not exactly the right way to respond because you're not taking into account your two different people, two different situations, two different frame of references. Well, of course you would do something because that's you but you're not the person that's asking you to listen to them. You are two totally different people. When you engage in social decentering, essentially letting go of what it is that you would do and instead just listen to that person and base your answers and your responses on what they are personally going through, it allows you some level of empathy. And we know from the past chapters, there's a difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy, you just feel bad for them. Empathy, you know what they're going through because you've probably been through something similar. So when you do social decenter, you are allowing for empathy to come through because you could probably put yourself in their shoes thinking about a situation in which you went through that was similar to this and then explaining this is what maybe you did in that situation that could help them out in their situation. That's totally different than saying, this is what I would do if I were you. If I were them, how would I feel is a quotation that you yourself can ask yourself as you are listening to what it is that uh, the person is speaking to you about. How would you feel if you were them? If I were them, how would I feel about the situation? If I were a subordinate, how would I feel about being yelled at by the manager? Or if I were a person who was passed over for a job, how would I feel now that my friend was passed over for a job and they're uh, venting about it to me? And you ask yourself, why is this important in the workplace? Why is it important to social decenter? Well, think about the corporate world right now. How, uh, not even the corporate world. Some of you work in restaurants, hotels, things of that nature. Think about how busy it is, how fast paced it is, and how things can happen so quickly. And sometimes some people need that venting needs someone to to listen to them and understand what their issues are understand what their problems are because it's so fast-paced we may not have time to actually sit down and uh, talk about it with people that we need to so instead we might pull a coworker or someone that we consider a friend at work and this is where social decentering comes into play but also hierarchy plays a role here Sometimes you're thinking about management versus subordinates. You're thinking about uh, supervisors versus management versus team leaders. Maybe you've been in this position for a while and someone brand new who's younger than you comes in and they're automatically in a position above you. How does social decentering play a role? How can we take into account their thoughts, their values, their backgrounds uh, while we're listening to uh, the message while we're listening to what it is that they're actually saying. And this is where active listening comes into play as well. When we talk about active listening, you're consciously focusing on the message. I want you to underline that word consciously, meaning you know exactly what you're doing. I know for a fact I am focusing on what it is this person is trying to say. When you actively listen, you can link details of messages to main ideas. You can understand key details that they're saying. And not only does that help you with the overall or the end, or the overall message, but it could also help you point out inaccuracies. It could also help you understand where that particular person is coming from. This could help you social decenter to understand the message. But with active listening, you must be at full alert. You must be fully alert and paying attention. For some of you, it's going to be hard because you're always on your phones. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing that causes people not to actively listen is, is being on their cell phones. But when you're actively listening, I want you to think about your nonverbals. Are you straight with your posture? Are you uh, giving eye contact? What facial expressions could you possibly be giving off 
at that particular moment. All of those play a role in uh, giving the perception or the idea, not even the perception, but giving the idea that you are prepared and that you're paying attention and that you're actively listening. And I put perception down here because I want you to think about this. Are there people that you work with that you know for a fact, I don't want to engage in conversation with them because I know they're not listening. And the question is, do you know that they're not listening or are they doing something that gives the perception that they're not listening? Some of you listening to this quick hit uh, probably don't have a lot of people that talk to you at work. Maybe there's some sort of perception about you when it comes to listening, all based upon your nonverbals. So I want you to think about this as you're conversing with other people at work. Not only that, when people are, are talking to you and you are the listener, look at nonverbals. What's the perception here? Is the perception that someone's actively listening to the message or is the perception that they do not care about this particular message and therefore not listening to what's happening and what's occurring with this message?